Alrighty, so let's talk about The Final Empire, which is the first book in the Mistborn series. Um, so, this book is really good. Um, we'll do, you know what, let's, let's get, let's get real classy here. Let's do a spoiler-free review for the first bit, and then I'll get into some spoilers at the end. So, spoiler-free, this is just a really good story. Um, it has a very nice, like, sort of traditional, um, hero's journey sort of vibe. Um, but perhaps told in a slightly more, um, you know, more interesting way. There's stuff, there's cool stuff going on. There's a really cool magic system. I don't want to get too much into it, because the magic system in of itself could be argued to be spoilers. But yeah, the magic system is really cool. The characters are really cool, specifically, um, specifically your main character. And, um, and, like, the squad. Um, who I don't want to get into too much, um, until the spoiler-free bit. But yeah, so you get some really nice character development, um, and some interactions between the characters, which are really interesting, where you get to see, sort of, their personalities come through. Um, so that's really nice. The villain is, um, cool. Uh, the villain's a little bit difficult to, um, to describe in just this one book, because in this one book you could argue, you know, it's sort of like a, uh, a Sauron-style, you know, villain, you know, just bad, big bad, but actually, uh, that's not the case, but I only know that's not the case because I've already read the series before, so in terms of this specific book, the villain's, like, so-so, you know, if, I mean, if you don't mind, like, an evil villain who's evil, then it works. Um, but yeah, in the context of a series, the villain's really strong. Um, I'm not too good at the spoiler-free shit, so let's, let's, let's get rid of that spoilers from here on in. Um, so yeah, the, um, the magic system is really, really cool. I really like how hard the magic system is here. It's very well, it's very well explained and very well described. And then even when new stuff is introduced, right, it's always, um, it's always make, it always makes sense. There's always, like, an explanation. It's like, oh, well, yeah, this, this might seem new and a bit weird, but it actually fits with this other metal, you know, um, and therefore, you could, you, maybe you couldn't have predicted it, but when, once you're told it, you're like, oh yeah, I get that, that makes sense. It's not like it's never um, Deus Ex Machina out of nowhere or anything like that. It's just really, a really well, a really interesting, well-developed magic system. And also, it's given to you early, you know. Brandon Sanderson doesn't, like, hold back. Well, not all of it's given to you, that's the thing, he feeds you tickbits later. But he doesn't, like, hold back on you and try and, like, confuse you or shit that's going on. He's like, this is how it works. And, you know, I mean, he has interesting ways of using it and stuff that come later. But he's not, like, hiding, hiding anything from you to, for the sake of it, you know. So you get... And that's also interesting as well, because that actually goes into our next point, which is character, which is... So we have our main character, Vin, who is, um, like, all untrusting and lonely and stuff, and so you sort of get this double whammy where, as a reader, when Kelsia shows her, um, shows her the magic system, you as the reader are like, oh, cool, this is a magic system I like, and I'm getting to know it and stuff, but you're also getting Vin's reaction to it, which is like, what, why is this guy telling me this? Like, I don't trust him, what's going on? Um, and so you, so you sort of get this dual perspective on it, um... Which leads to some character development going on. So it's not like just a... So it's not a mistake where it's just like a big info dump. This is the magic system, you know, and it doesn't mean anything to the characters or anything. The characters are all learning alongside you and growing um, almost alongside you as well. So that's really cool. Um, I quite enjoy uh, the the balls and stuff. A little bit of court intrigue in this book. It's quite cool. Um, and I will say that probably... I mean, maybe I'm a bit basic, but my favourite part of this book is probably the uh, little romance that goes on between Vin and Alan who is her nobleman consort, I guess, um, at least for this book. Um, and yeah, I just think that's, um, that's a really nice, wholesome romance where you can sort of see, you, you can sort of see where it's going, but, like, it's, uh, you know, the, the journey there is fun. Um, and then the actual overall plot, you could argue, is a little bit simplistic. It's like, yes, we're throwing over, we're overthrowing an evil empire, but it's a little bit, um, it's not super formulaic in the way it's executed, even if you might know where it's going. So you still get a lot of interest out of it. And there's... Brandon Sanderson doesn't shy away from violence either. It's not just there. There's no, like... There's not action for the sake of it. But when it happens, it's well described and interesting. Um, so I really like that. But yeah, overall, I think that this book... Um, it's interesting because I was reading this book whilst I was listening to Stormlight Archive. And I did find myself wanting to go to Stormlight more than this book. And I, I'm not quite sure the reason why. Because this book is not bad. Like, it's really good work. But I think there's just something... Um, it's just not quite as compelling, um, in terms of character as Stormlight. Like, I like Vin and I like where she's going, but it didn't, I didn't have to, I didn't, like, have to run back to, to, you know, keep reading this book. But it was, it's good. It's a really nice Brandon Sanderson book up there with some of his best. Um, and importantly, it sets us up really well for the sequels, which I'll be doing reviews of right after this. Um, but yeah, I would say that this is probably a really nice introduction to Sanderson. If you've never read anything by him, just jump into this and you will be... Um, and you'll be happy and pleased, because whilst I did prefer Stormlight, um, myself, uh, it is a little bit of a steeper learning curve, and it's also really long.
so in terms of audiobook, the audiobook for this, I believe, is about 24 hours, and then the audiobook for Way of Kings, the first Stormlight book, is like 50 hours. So yeah, you gotta, you got to have some commitment if you, if you want to be jumping into Stormlight. Um, so, uh, is there anything else about this book that, um, that, like, specifically stood out to me? I think also, I think the setting, just the vibe, is really cool, and we'll get into that more in the sequels, because it becomes more of a thing in the sequels, but in this book, well, just specifically with the, um, the vibe, you really get the idea that, you know, the city is, like, real dark and shitty, and, um, and the whole empire is just kind of, like, blech, and the sun's red, and you're like, what's going on? Like, it's just, it gives you, it gives you the vibe, but I think Brandon Sanderson's trying to set you up for, for this whole series. Um, so yeah, no, really good book, and pick it up, read it, listen to it, enjoy it. Bye.